Boy, if you have not been watching the news, you're going to love this video. It is just wild. I put a, a lot of time into this one, taking a look at what is going on out there right now in the cryptoverse. We're seeing major things happening. Do you know who uh, Kevin O'Leary is, Mr. Wonderful on Shark Tank? There is something I used to uh, love talking with the students in class about some of those uh, Shark Tank episodes and stuff like that. They loved it. And Mr. Wonderful was always a fun thing to, to watch. But check this out. Top investor Kevin O'Leary is waiting for someone in the crypto world to go to zero. Panic events define bottoms. I absolutely 100% agree with him on this. We are waiting for that capitulation, the mass exodus by the, by the institutional people as well. And some big names to fail. I, I mentioned that myself, that usually at the bottoms, we had a Lehman Brothers type event back in 2007 to 2009. You have other events as we move back in history, forward in history of major companies that no one ever thought would go away, going away. You know, think about some of those major, you know, Blockbuster, Circuit City, for all those big companies we used to go everywhere, and now you don't. And so, he says something about this, right? But here's, you know, I'm going to get into this. There's going to be a multi-pieces into this. In case you don't know this, O'Leary talked to Coindesk here ahead of the June 2022 move to the Toronto Stock Exchange. And they're talking about Wonderfy. For those that don't know about Wonderfy, I will explain it. Uh, it's a crypto marketplace registered trading platform in which O'Leary and FTX, the FTX uh, CEO or partners in, strategic investors, I should say, and uh, anyway, so they talk about that. At the end of the day, you got to understand that there's going to be a lot of pain out there for, uh, for some big companies. And we're going to find out about who that is going to be very, very soon. But before I get into it, let's just take a look at this right here. This is Wonderfy uh, Technologies. And you can see this here year to date down 70, almost 72%. And I think if we go to the year chart, you can see it topped out here and uh, it's down 77% at one point. It was down about 87%. So when I look at things like that and people say, hey, is it a winner? When you see stocks related to crypto, crypto itself down 80 to 90%, that is the winner. That is usually, in my opinion, where we'll see massive buyouts. We'll see companies failing. The bigger companies that succeed end up buying the ones in all their accounts and everything else that are smaller, and you get a consolidation in the crypto industry. That consolidation is a normal part of this cycle. And you see a, a lot of companies out there run out of capital, the money dries up, they don't have the trades happening. And so when the trades die down, the money dies down. And I, what was the Buffett thing? When the tide goes out, we can see who's swimming naked, kind of comment his quote on that. Uh, this is one of them situations. When you see Ethereum dip down to 899, Bitcoin sub 20,000, it's ugly because a lot of people didn't think we'd see Ethereum under 1,000, which was the high of the last bull run. And uh, usually during the next bear run, we see the lows around the same as the highs of the previous bull run for those who have checked out the technical history of the uh, crypto market. So with all that being said, I am not here to bash on Wonderfy because, remember, any stock related, Coinbase, very similar, 75% down year to date. And take a look at Wonderfy, and it's actually only down year to date, 72%, we'll say. So it's actually outperforming Coinbase. All right. So Mr. Wonderful is uh, invested in that. And then we move into the, the information today. This is the one that you're going to want to watch. This is something else. Crypto Lender. BlockFi struggles to raise cash despite discount source, all right? Now, this was back in June 17th, and I had some people ask me about it and everything else. And so, obviously, it looks like they were trying to raise cash. Fast forward to yesterday, and to me, this was a huge article out of Coindesk. Morgan Creek is trying to counter FTX's BlockFi bailout leak call shows. So, they had a leak call. And as this goes in there, you can see FTX's $250 million credit facility offer. They're offering BlockFi $250 million. Uh, if Inc., as initially proposed, stood to effectively wipe out all BlockFi shareholders, including Morgan Creek Digital, 
the firm told investors. So they are panicking because the money they put into it would be gone. And it looks like anybody who had investments in there would be gone. And this is what we're looking at for those wondering, based on this information here. Cryptocurrency investment firm Morgan Creek Digital is attempting to raise the $250 million from investors to purchase a majority stake in crypto lender BlockFi. Majority stake. That, that's big. They want to run this thing. Uh, so they're trying to do what they need to do. And of course, when we get down here, uh, I've been making calls all day. They're trying to get what they need to do. But here's the, here's the line. Ready? According to USCO, I don't know if I'm saying that right. I apologize if I'm not. Uh, the FTX credit line proposed had a catch for BlockFi's existing shareholders. It gave FTX the option to buy BlockFi at essentially zero price. If FTX were to exercise said option, it would effectively wipe out all BlockFi's existing equity shareholders, including management and employees with stock options, as well as all equity investors in the company's previous venture rounds. So this goes to show you, uh, even though it's a huge name, it's big, they got great, uh, they, I like their platform, they could get in big trouble, anybody invested in that. Now, uh, I had a valid reason down here. Here you can see that they said on the leak call that BlockFi founder Zach Prince, Flory Marquez, had a valid reason for preliminarily accepting the terms of the several emergency financing offers BlockFi received. FTX was the only one that would not subordinate client assets to a rescuer. It means that all the clients in there are fine to go, do what they want to do, and there's no issues with that. In other words, unless BlockFi went with FTX, its depositors would have to wait in line behind the new lender to be repaid. Additionally, BlockFi had not received any equity financing options at that stage. Uh, USCO, USCO did not identify any of the other firms that proposed bailout packages for BlockFi. Uh, and so uh, we'll find out. Here we go. And you can see right here tweeted that the company had signed a preliminary term sheet with FTX. They told investors on the leak call that FTX and BlockFi were probably three days away from signing a definite agreement. So you're looking at what? What's the day? June 25th. We didn't see that yet because that was on the 21st. So we're looking at the 24th. And now today is the, uh, what do we got here? The 26th will be by the time you guys see this video. And so no news on that yet. They're still trying to figure out where they're going. I think they're because they're waiting down here because here it is where you can see Morgan Creek. The only alternative is to raise the equivalent amount in equity. And that's what we're working on. Yusko said investors on the call, I would say I would say it's a 10% possibility, but not zero. So very interesting. We know, uh, you know, we got a lot of different cryptos out there. And that's why I brought up Mr. Wonderful's beginning to this, where Kevin O'Leary uh, talks about, you know, waiting for something big to happen. He's mentioned this before uh, that, um, you know, you wait and see if bad things happen out there. Uh, you don't get a bottom, here it is, until you have an event, O'Leary told, told Coindesk uh, this week, in the crypto world, we need someone to go to zero. And that could be exchanges. We know we've heard news out there about Celsius. You're hearing it about BlockFi. You're hearing it about other ones. That is the bottom. Think back to the dot-com bust when a lot of companies that, uh, when I was in the business, a lot of those dot-coms went to zero. And other companies would come and scoop them up for pennies on the dollar. And you could see, and I expect to see, the same thing in the crypto space. That leads to that next round, the next bull run. For the dot-com industry, it was a major bull run. And we know we never look back. Uh, you can look at Amazon, Apple, some of those, eBay, and PayPal. And some of those companies that were near zero, and now just spiked, and they went huge. Is it going to be the same for the crypto space? I believe so. I absolutely believe so. But that's up to, uh, we'll see how things go. Now, just to give you an idea of where we're at right now, uh, you can see Bitcoin at this time, this week up 16.47%, which is fantastic. Ethereum uh, this week up 30.23%, uh, which is crushing. They're doing great. I'm loving it. But big one, Sandbox, for those who have not, in the last day up 12%, the last, check this out, this week 65%. If we did hit the bottom, 
if the selling pressures have abated, we are going to see upward push in crypto prices, which could save some exchanges out there, but some of them, it could be too late. And so as we go through this, and if you haven't gotten Sandbox, you're like, wow, Mo, that's crazy. This is one of my metaverse plays. I have this one still. Uh, you can get that over at Gemini. I got a link right below where you're going to get $20 in free Bitcoin for signing up. Using my link, I'm not signing up. You're going to get $20 in free Bitcoin for trading $100 or more. Or if you sign up, you can get $7 in free Ethereum just for signing up. You can get anybody 18 or older in there to do that. Take advantage of that. So now I wanted to end on something different. Take a look at the markets. Remember, this is the S&P 500 this month. Uh, we're going to take a look at the S&P 500, 3.6 down. Dow Jones over the last month, we're going to look at them all, 3.48. So almost about the same. NASDAQ this month. 1.13, and then the Russell this month down 3.94, all right? So then we go to Europe. How's Europe doing? How's Germany? The DAX, 7.8. We know Germany has that energy issue. I think, you know, that's bad. Uh, the UK, which I think is one of the best over in the EU to be investing in. The, uh, then we got the CAC 40 this month down 5.27. That's out of France. And then, of course, uh, IBEX out of um, Spain, you can go over 7.25%. And of course, uh, as we get over here and take a look at the last one, and we're going to go over to Asia and check this out. And of course, we'll go to Shanghai. Now, China has been buying all they can buy of the cheap oil. If you take a look at there, they're up 7.26%, quantitative easing. Everything's going the right way for these stocks, okay? And that's the last month. Looks like a typical bull run. I would expect more of this. Uh, Hang Seng out of Hong Kong, 7.97. Uh, Not quite straight up like Shanghai, but has been rallying. Then the Nifty 50. This is the other one. This is out of India that they have been buying everything they can from Russia in terms of oil. How are they doing over the last month? Well, they're down 2.91%. Uh, but did they bottom? I don't know. And I'm watching this one because we could be seeing a delay here. And this one could be rising after that cheap energy prices makes their goods and services even more attractive. So at this point, you see that opportunity out there. I'm just trying to point out that there's a lot going on in the crypto space. And we could, we could have hit a bottom. I continue to buy through this because I do believe a bottom is very, 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 very near uh, if we haven't already hit it and i am buying big time i don't believe we're going to see another 50 to 60 percent drop from current prices like some people out there i don't buy into the fud i actually believe the next bull run is going to be amazing and we're going to see massive moves in crypto in my opinion i'm talking about ethereum i believe ethereum is going to go through the roof and some associated uh, altcoins out there i think bitcoin's going to do very well too but i believe ethereum is going to overtake bitcoin in the next few years now uh, with that being said, th if you haven't taken advantage of this, do this down below. Moo Moo giving you 10 free shares of stock right now. All you got to do to get six free shares, put in a penny. One cent gets you six free shares of stock worth up to $15,000. And on top of that, if you put $100 or more in, you will get, uh, what do we get? Seven free shares worth up to $17,500 altogether, plus one share guaranteed of Lucid for an eighth share. That's a great deal. And uh, if you haven't done this as well, I do have the Weeble link down below, deposit one penny, get six free shares of stock. And I have the Australian link for Moo Moo down there. For anybody in Australia, you can get some free stocks now as well, but it's a different link. And uh, of course, I showed you the other link down below over to uh, Gemini. Take advantage of that. I'm selling you $20. You can get $7 in free Ethereum just for signing up. I would do the 20, uh, the trade $100 or more to get the 20 bucks in Bitcoin. I think it's going to take off. But just my opinion. And uh, that's it. That's where we're going to stop right now. We're going to stop right there and get, you know, let me know what you think about that update. Do you think, let me ask this before we end. Do you think that uh, we'll go with Ethereum? Ethereum is around 1200 and so. Uh, do you think Ethereum will hit 899 again or lower? So under 900. Or have we already bottomed out and we move higher? And so, in other words, do you think? Uh, Ethereum drops below 900 again. Yes or no? That's it. Put it in the comments. I want to see what you think. I don't think so. I don't think we get back down to 899 or lower. I could be wrong. I don't got a magic uh, crystal ball here, 
but I feel like the worst of the worst has been priced in. You're going to start to see some picking up of buying. But like I said, there, you know, a lot of people say, where's the money going to come from? Where's this and that? Listen, they got the old fashioned saying, Tina, there is no alternatives. In other words, where are you going to put money to go against inflation? You already see crypto down this low. We know the next run will happen. So a lot of people are saying, look, I want to start buying some at this level. These are down 70, 80 percent. I want to start getting some. So a lot of people are seeing this low and saying, look, even if it does drop a little bit, it won't be forever. We got some big positive events coming up, the halving for Bitcoin, the merge for Ethereum. And of course, we could always see some ETS for crypto moving forward, different kinds here in the States. There's a lot of positives out there. So I don't think everyone out there is just sell, 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 sell. I think once you see that big run up, a lot of people who have been shorting crypto are going to get burned. And just like you saw the leveraging going higher and companies and people getting burned, you can see the same thing on the opposite end with the shorting. They're going to get burned when you have that big pop, that doubling. And all of a sudden it's up to two, three thousand for Ethereum. They have to buy because they're getting margin called and everything else. And that can happen. And I think it's going to happen. And so we'll wait and see how this plays out. But that's just my opinion. I appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done it, get down there. Click on that Patreon link. Come on over and join me. We got the buys and sells, the portfolios. And of course, you can uh, join our private Discord for members over at the Patreon. And I'm in there chatting. I appreciate you stopping by. Well, let's get out there and make some money.